So the rescue competition um, started because of a, a real need, because the, it started after there was an earthquake in Kobe um, that, that wiped out a, a large part of the city. And it was, there was a real need seen for how do you get uh, emergency services to disaster sites and how do you protect the, 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 uh, the rescuers uh, you know, going into dangerous areas. So that's where the, the rescue robot competition started. Um, and it's, um, it's run by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US. So all of the test methods in the rescue arena have been developed as real test methods that are used to, to, to um, certify robots for real use in these things. Um, in this arena, we've had it. Uh, it's, we've had the help of the, the New South Wales Police Rescue and Bomb Disposal Unit to build it. So at the end of the competition, the the, the bomb squad is going to be taking this uh, field away, and they'll be using it to set up their own testing and training. You're in a confined space. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. these robots respond to any situation yeah, do, right? where you need eyes and hands and ears downrange where you don't want to put a human. This could be a suspicious item on a train station, for example. This could be the interior of a nuclear reactor building, such as was encountered at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. All the elements test things that, can, that, that have really been seen in, in disaster sites. So for example, mobility over rough terrain. You know, if you go into a collapsed building, you have uneven floors, you have staircases with rubble piled on top of them. Um, you've got to be able to get into and look into tight spaces because someone may be trapped in there. So all of these robots, the idea is that they can explore a, a, a really difficult environment, um, map out the area for the human rescuers later on. So the problems that we are trying to solve here range from mobility, can the robot overcome various obstacles? Manipulation and dexterity, that is, can they pick up objects, can they delicately manipulate things, can they pick up heavy objects, can they do this remotely in locations where we don't want to put a human. This event is unique in the level of involvement that we have with this responder community. We actually have the New South Wales Bomb Squad here with us, both presenting their robots as well as looking at the innovations that have been generated by the students. The Bomb Squad community or any emergency response community gets to watch what the state of the science is doing and learn about what's coming. They get to help shape the interfaces, shape the tasks. They have certain tests in mind that represent their mission. But the users that use these tests the most are bomb squads. Anyone dealing with known explosives wants to do so from a remote standoff. Currently, they use a lot of bomb suits. Bomb suits are big padded suits with helmets where they go down range and try to interact and, and thwart the device. But it's, you know, proximity alone makes it terribly dangerous.